Okay, okay, are we all here? Okay, are we all here? A little echo, turn that down. Let's see. And boom. Hey, everybody. My name is Michael Markowski, and I'm going to be showing you how to draw today. Thank you for joining me here in my studio in Vancouver, Canada. And if this is the first time you've seen my face, then welcome. I'm going to be showing uh, how to draw some older people today. Now, that doesn't mean you have to go back and watch all of the previous 15 videos, but I would encourage it. I think it would make everything make a little bit more sense and make things easier for you. Um, but regardless, this class is intended for beginner artists, so you're in the right place. And even if you've drawn a little bit in the past, I think you'll find uh, what we're doing is a great refresher. And specifically today is something you know, even in my experience as a teacher, I just haven't had a chance to teach very much just because, oh, I mean, for all sorts of different factors that we could get into, maybe while we're drawing, I'll ramble a little bit about that. <laughs> okay, so uh, what we're going to need is um, paper, a, you get up, you got a sketchbook. This is, by the way, my favorite kind. This is uh, this Canson sketchbook. And just make sure volumes are down here. Uh, the reason why I like this one is that we can um, add some paint or watercolor or ink to it and the pages won't warp as opposed to your photocopy paper is um, great for drawing on, less so for painting on. Not that we're necessarily going to be painting today, but if you do want to use your, your sketchbook for other things, having something that is um, flexible to expand to meet all of your interests is encouraged okay so we need a sketchbook and then we need some pencils so I've got colored pencils which I often use uh, you don't have to use them I, I like using them for the class just so you can kind of see the different steps that I'm doing because um, sometimes we get a whole bunch of lines all over and like what is what right so that's why I use colored pencils but you could use you know just a regular pencil you found on the floor somewhere as long as it's been properly sanitized, right? Okay. So, um, where should we be? What I usually do at the beginning of each class is do a, um, a quick warm up drawing, and then we kind of learn some techniques, and then we work one final drawing by the end of the day. And then at the very, very end, there's some time for questions. I go through the comments and respond to any kind of questions that might have come up and do some extra drawing and or give people feedback on the drawings that they sent in. So if you're interested in um, getting my feedback on your artwork, you could send it through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all those different kinds of things, either direct message or tag me, and in the end I'll kind of try to find your artwork. Um, and I just see uh, Palash says, Hi, hi, are you the artist going to the moon? Uh, that if you can definitely watch the videos where I'm talking about going to the moon. Um, yes, that's me. So uh, that probably won't be for a few years now. But uh, um, yep, you have the opportunity to learn from a lunar artist today. <laughs> okay, so uh, today um, let's just kind of let's flip to a blank page in our sketchbook. Maybe as I'm doing this, I'm just going to kind of a quick refresher. These are some of the drawings from the last few classes where I was showing how to draw different drawing techniques and different body shapes. And then on Tuesday, we talked about drawing children and babies. And just as a kind of refresher again, what we did is we talked um, last, last couple of weeks, we were talking about drawing the eight head tall figure or the kind of heroic male figure and then we did uh, the heroic female figure last week and then so what we started doing is how how do we okay that's great if we want to draw superman or wonder woman got it we've got two great videos showing you how to do that but let's say you want to draw a regular joe right well that would be to reduce this eight head tall figure down to a seven head tall figure that would be kind of the regular male 
would be kind of, you know, your five foot five, six foot kind of figure kind of fits here, right? LeBron James right up here, Kawhi Leonard, all those big basketball player, tall, tall guys, Conan O'Brien, um, uh, who, who I met and who is very, very tall. Um, and then you have, as we go down here in the kind of, um, in terms of the how tall proportionally a person could be, here we have like a six head tall. So that would be kind of maybe your shorter adult or your teenager before they become super tall and lanky, right? Um, and then we talked about, okay, so if here's your five head tall person would be your like a, a 10 year old child. That's what that little 10 is. Here's a four head tall, six, three, and then one. I should also say that right now, the way that this is drawn on a grid shows every head of equal size. So actually, if we were drawing a little baby, their head wouldn't be quite so big. It might be much smaller their head might be, you know, in relationship to a full adult might be kind of small, but that also means that their body, oops, I'm not, I'm off the screen here. So their head might be this big and the rest of their body, let's say their legs starting here, right? So that might be kind of, you're like, well, that's a really big baby head. It's the same size as a fully grown human head. Well, that's just using this scale, but it would actually be drawn much smaller. Right, so you can look at uh, last class's thumbnail and you can see I actually took a photograph and cut and pasted those heads to make it uh, make sense. Okay, so today we, and then we did some drawings of little babies from this uh, character from uh, The Incredibles and a boy dressed up in, like a, a real boy dressed up in The Incredibles outfit to show the difference um, in how they're um, illustrated. So, what I want to do today for a warm-up drawing on a nice blank page here, make sure that all fits uh, a little tight, if I can zoom out, ah, is I want to look at some images of um, older folks and, um, and then make some drawing, make a quick sketch based on them. And, you know, as I was doing the research for today's class, I realized there's a, a, a very, very fruitful, um, this is a really fruitful area for us to talk about. And I'll just kind of throw some things up on the screen here. This is perhaps the most famous um, uh, older artist, senior artist. This is a woman um, named, well, actually, to be honest, I don't even know her real name, but she goes, she's, she was known as Grandma Moses. And, uh, you know, to be honest, I don't really know too much about her story. Well, here's, there's a video, um, you could, this is, uh, I think this is on YouTube's or Vimeo here. Grandma Moses, a 1950 film, um, just sort of Anna Mary, maybe her last name was Moses. Uh, but she didn't start painting until she was like in her 70s or 80s, I think. I mean, I could be completely wrong, but I believe that she was a very, very late uh, bloomer, you know, which is not unusual. I should also say that, you know, we're used to in, in pop culture these days thinking about really young people being famous and... Um, and that might be, I don't really know much about the history of music or dance, um, or poetry or, or, uh, uh literature. Um, obviously in dance, you being younger helps, but traditionally when it comes to fine art, most artists did not achieve any fame, renown, recognition until they were much older in life. In fact, a lot of the time, um, artists had other, you know, they, they might have been an artist and then worked a job as a lawyer or a dentist or a doctor or, you know, so on, so on. And then once they retired, became artists or towards, they were still making art, but devoted themselves entirely towards art towards the end of their lives. Um, so, you know, you, you look at people like Jackson Pollock and all the artists, the American artists in like the 1950s, 
there's kind of a really interesting kind of clash that happened between and a certain amount of resentment of artists who were, you know, had had previous careers, struggled, 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 and only, you know, in their 50s and 60s did they start making money and selling paintings. Um, and then you had the pop artists like Andy Warhol and Roy Lichtenstein who started to achieve fame when they were younger, in their, like, 30s and 40s, which is kind of young for art. Um, so... I just thought I'd put that out there because I think sometimes people think like, oh, this is a young kid's game. When it comes to art, that is not the case. It very Even to this day, there are some younger artists who achieve fame, but it is still um, mostly older artists who are kind of the, the most well-known and recognized people. And again, there's a whole bunch of reasons we could get into for that. But I thought I'd show you Grandma Moses' art, um, her, her artwork. The reason we're not going to use her for our warm-up drawing is that most of her art is landscape-based. Um, so she made these just, I think they're really, I don't know how well they're showing up there on the screen. Um, but uh, her, um, she was mostly a self-taught artist. And so she spent her time painting these pictures of these beautiful kind of countrysides. Um, and... I don't know if, if these are imagined scenes or things that she saw and sketched, but I find this art, just her in general being very inspiring, these pictures and just the, the, the energy and drive to, uh, to make, to make art, you know, I, I think is, it's something I think all of us somewhere share inside of us, but you know, often we become kind of afraid that we're going to make bad things, and so we just better not do it at all. We don't embarrass ourselves. When there are these people like Grandma Moses who is like, you know what? I'm at a certain age now. I don't care what anybody thinks. If I make bad art, whatever, right? So, and she ended up making great art that is very, very popular. Her paintings sell for millions of dollars these days. Um, I also thought, um, here's another thing, just doing this research, I found this is another woman, she's, I think, what, 87 years old, Concha Garcia Ziara, who lives in Spain, has started making these paintings on her computer, All right, this is, look, I mean, these are probably better <laughs> art digital drawings than I could do on on my computer. And so again, this is we think of older people as not even knowing how to use technology and here she's using her computer to paint. So that should also be an inspiration to people that there's there's no trick that is too good for old dogs. <laughs> you know what that they're trying to mangled that uh, um, old dogs can learn new tricks is what I'm saying. Okay, so I thought I'd show you that. But the, what we are going to draw is um, an image by the artist Edvard Munch, who is kind of most famous for drawing or, and painting the scream. Um, and so here... We're not going to do this one, but this is a painting he did. I think he died in 1945, 44, right around the end of World War II. Uh, you know, he lived until his 90s, I'd say. Um, but this is, you know, he, one of his final paintings. Uh, just some people on the beach. Um, this is a painting he did of Frederick Nietzsche. Um, another, an old man, but uh, but I guess he painted in 1906. This is, he was still maybe in his 60s or so. Um, this is another painting. I, I, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Munch's. Um, but uh, this one he painted in 1919 while he was suffering from the uh, Spanish flu that ravaged the world. You know, the, pretty much the, the biggest disease that went around the world since the one that we're currently dealing with um and uh and also he ended up having this degenerative eye disease so a lot of his older paintings have this big weird empty space inside so i just thought that's super interesting um but i thought we would do this one um this painting is a self-portrait with cod's head <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought it was kind of a, a, a fun, weird painting. 
Um, and I'm, I'm going to show you how I would draw this picture as a warm up drawing. So we got your pencils. If you just want to use a black and white pencil, totally fine. I'm going to use like a red and pink, just which I've, I always do. Um, just so you could see the different stages of my drawings. Okay, so let's uh, let's get to it here. We'll find my split screen. Okay, and there's uh, maybe you might hear my daughter upstairs who's um, just waking up. <laughs> the other side of the uh, the circle of life. Oops. Oh, let's. Uh, Sorry, I'm gonna bring this back up here and move this over so it's properly centered. Okay, so to begin this drawing, um, and this again, this is a warm-up drawing, so we're gonna be kind of uh, easy on ourselves. I'm gonna start by trying to kind of locate this head. All right, so I'm drawing. And the other, th another thing why I kind of chose this is Monk's kind of style at this time is also very loose and gestural. Like trying to locate where the facial features and everything are is a little bit tricky. So he allows himself to do a very kind of sketchy kind of line when it comes to drawing and painting, especially if you look at his prints. So I'm just kind of loosely sketching things in here. Um, for the face, we're gonna talk about portraiture next week, but I'm just gonna kind of give you a quick little uh, introduction. If we divide the face in half, so we've got two equal sides, and then we divide this in half again, so we have equal sides on the top and bottom. And then if we divide in half here, in the between the center and the outside, is where the eye is going to go. So again, between this side and here is where this eye is going to go. So these are kind of the center parts of those eyes. And then we have these eyes kind of around here. Okay. Next thing between the middle of the face and the chin is where the nose is going to go. So we've got this kind of triangular shape for a nose. Maybe I should be drawing a little darker just so it shows up better on your screen. And then in between the nose and the chin is where the mouth goes. So we've got his mouth and then we've got the bottom lip here. And then he's got his little mustache and then chin. And then the ears are are between the eye line and the nose line. And if I'm going a little fast, that's okay. You can always pause and, and catch up. And um, so here's, and then you've, you've got some hair off on the side. Okay, now I'm gonna try to find the rest of the drawing. And I always try to like using the drawing to kind of it's like little building blocks to slowly kind of build outward from one area so that I can find where everything goes here. So here's where this necktie is going to be around there. And now I'm just looking at the drawing and I'm noticing the way that I've drawn. See, this is kind of where I've got his shoulders. But I look at the image over here and I notice that it's almost like his shoulders would kind of touch his nose. Do you see that? How if I kind of continue the line through the shoulders, they go through his nose. Okay, so I'm gonna move the shoulders up a bit. Okay, and that's gonna change the drawing, right? It, because now it's less like he's sitting upright and more like he's leaning down a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to come down here. Now we have this knife, and I'm just going to quickly block in where that knife would go. All right. And then we've got a hand. So I'm just going to kind of this, just a basic shape for a hand. 
All right, and then here's this the um, this part of his hand right here, and then his shirt. Okay, and I'm going to go on the other side here. So if this is that, what is that? Looks like he's got two knives, but I think that's supposed to be a fork or something, maybe. Um, so I, I love Monk's style, just because how kind of loose he is. If you've if you've seen the screen, which is you know one of the most famous images in in, in human history, let alone the Western world, um, you'd. Uh, you'd see kind of how abstract his artwork can be at times. Okay. So I've got these hands. You can see I haven't even bothered doing the fingers or anything yet. And then I'm going to try drawing this cod, this fish. It's got this big blob here. It almost looks like a, a ram's head or something, right? We've got an eye. I should. There's kind of a line going down the middle. And then it looks like another eye. And then he's got this horn kind of thing coming around here, like as I said, like a ram's head. And then this looks like some teeth or something here. And then a plate. <laughs> and then the table is somewhere under here. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to quickly throw in, we got a background... Um, on either side, and then there's some kind of door. So, that's kind of my underdrawing. This is what I want to be able to do as quickly as possible. Like that, I did that in about five minutes. So, if you're just getting started, if you can do something like that in ten minutes, that would be great. That would be, that would be great. Um, ideally... If I was going, if I was doing this on my own, I would try to do this in about two minutes or less. I know that's kind of maybe asking a lot for for our purposes, but you'd want to see if you could get as much of this drawn as quickly as possible, so that you can move. If, if like I said, that shoulder, if I wanted to move that up or down, like for instance, I noticed this, um, the knife and everything, this whole arm, everything down here could shift up a little bit if I wanted to um, because um, it does look a little bit lower than it than it is in the image to the right here but uh, I think for our purpose as a warm-up drawing that's fine so I'm just gonna let it sit there for just a second while I uh, um, wait for people to catch up uh, and I'll just look at some comments here, people. <laughs> yeah, so there, I, there's a video about me talking about going to the moon um, on my... You're, you're watching me on YouTube right now, so afterwards or right now, if you're bored, you can uh, just click on, on those video, that video. There's me on television talking about it and all that kind of stuff. In ter and uh, Heidi's question down there is, she says, uh, do they call this an impressionist style? Um, uh, Edward Munch would be considered more of a post-impressionist, along with people like um, Vincent van Gogh and um, uh, Paul Gauguin, those artists who, like, impressionism as an art movement uh, was sort of like 1860 to 1880 or something around there. And then post-impressionism follows afterwards uh, using some of the very same techniques, absolutely. Um, but uh, maybe with a different kind of approach, like philosophy, etc. We'll get into that, though. Um, so, we've got the basics of this drawing in place. Now let's kind of start chiseling in here. And again, I'm going to use Monk's style, very kind of sketchy kind of style here to illustrate this. So I'm kind of going back into this face and just kind of, you can see this is a different kind of way than, than, I, than I draw some other things. You can see I'm really kind of going 
over, back and forth, over my lines, over and over and over again. And I'm not afraid to, um, to put lots of lines down. Right, you could see the way the way that he I'll just even scribble this in here. Because you could see the way that he did that. Right? I'm gonna scribble some other things in here. Right? He's he's a little bit uh, fearless here. So I want you to be be fearless. Alright, he just kinda comes in. I'm not gonna you know go full color with this and try to you know get all the oranges and yellows and greens and everything I'm gonna keep my drawing um, fairly I'm just gonna keep it in in blue and red um, so I'm just slowly working my way around this face and trying to kind of find the the kind of big Kind of shapes that kind of jump out at me as I'm drawing and one way to do that is by squinting your eyes like you're pretending to sleep right like you're you're I remember just being a little kid and you know reading comic books with a flashlight underneath the covers and then I wanted to keep it as dark as possible so you know and then if uh my parents saw a little light in, they come into the room, I'd just pretend that I'd, I was reading comics an hour ago and I'd fallen asleep and, and, I'd, and I would have my eyes a little bit uh, uh, partly open to try to see if they had left the room or anything, right? So think about like <laughs> closing your eyes almost all the way so that you could see um, a little bit, but not everything. So another thing that I'm doing here, I'm, I'm not going full detail on the face. What I'm, I'm going to apply the same sort of loose mark making all the way around. This arm is sort of cut off by the by the side of the painting, so I'm just he's got a finger here, and then I think you got another finger here. And then I think these are and then I'm darken this in a bit. Okay. <laughs> and I don't even see the collar on this side of his jacket, but I'm just gonna draw it in anyway. And that's the way sometimes it happens when you're making, drawing artwork, is that you sometimes have to draw things wrong in order to make it look right. You have to kind of take some liberties to, um, uh, to make it look believable, which is, you know, sounds a little bit counterintuitive, but um, just the way it is sometimes. Sometimes you, you have to... Uh, and I notice, like, if you're trying to copy from a photograph, this happens all the time. Um, oh, my pencil just broke. Let me see. I'm just going to use a different blue here. I'm going to get a, probably a little bit different color, but that's all right. And... I forgot. This is, uh, we're going to make this a fork, or what do you think that is? is that a... Oh, I, s I bet you it looks like the fork. I I'm just going to make it look more fork-like. There. And then let's say this is... And we got this fish head here. Um, uh, so going back to Impressionism and Post-Impressionism, uh, Edward Munch was from, 
Norway, if I recall. And kind of those Scandinavian countries were not really directly a part of of those movements. Um, so if there's somebody watching from Norway, Finland, you know, or any of those Scandinavian countries would probably know better than, than I about the kind of art movements that he may have belonged to and, and the other artists in that region. You know, because back in the day, you know, news traveled much slower than it does today. And uh, so they weren't really directly a part of what was going on in Paris and Berlin and everything. Um, I did, they didn't have the internet back then. <laughs> um, let me see. And so this table. So and this painting is from 1940, self-portrait. So this is towards the end of his life. Um, and you know, just as a quick thing, when we're when you're drawing people, you know, as they as they're older, you kind of want to get a little bit more um, of a bony kind of a quality, right? Like features tend to kind of sink in a little bit and um as opposed to when you're drawing children and everything is kind of very you know uh pudgy and um, yeah, they have that baby fat right as we get older you know if you're, if you're drawing somebody like me you you've got the you, you put on you get a little bit round again <laughs> so your 20s you kind of thin out you're, you're 30s and 40s, you start to put it all back on again, and then in your 60s and 70s, you start to get thin again, right? And just the, the, the way the world works. Um, okay. So let me just kind of go back around here. So now I'm just going to go back over some of these, uh, my lines, and make things a little bit uh, darker and uh, put in a little bit of shadow in some places. So let's say like on his face here, I'm going to put in a little bit of a darker line, like you've got these eyes. eyebrows again I'm squinting at this drawing trying to like what are the the darkest parts here right he's got these bags under his eyes All right this nose the lips um, kind of these this kind of these cheeks get are kind of a little bit more sunken. Um, okay, so I'm going to draw for maybe let's say three more minutes and then we're going to move on. And I'm just going to, so I did these lines going this way. On this side, I'm going to go the opposite way. All right. And maybe actually on this side, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go this way here. It's a little bit of cross hatching here obviously this is different than when we're painting I traditionally like trying to draw from other drawings I think you learn a little bit more than when you're trying to draw from paintings um, we, our, our final drawing we're going to do today is 
directly based on a, a drawing. So that uh, is going to make things a little bit easier for. Because you know, if you're if you're trying to draw from a painting, you're you have to kind of convert all of the the colors into black and white. And you can actually one thing that might make your life a little bit easier is if you take a photo from the web and you drag it to your desktop and then open it up in another like a Windows Media Viewer or Preview on the Mac and literally take the color out, make it a black and white image. That will make it easier for you to draw that uh, that same image. Okay. Okay, I think f for a warm-up that feels good enough. That was like a... Because I want to move on and show you some... Um, uh, so how to draw the kind of the proportions of the body, etc. Okay, maybe we'll just leave that for a quick second. And then I'm going to... Sip my tea. You know, at this point, I can also look at his. Sh I see his shoulders. I've made him maybe look a little bit more slumped than he actually is. So, he, in my drawing, he looks maybe a little more dejected <clears throat> and a little bit angrier. I, maybe the way that I've drawn these eyebrows look a little more angular than they are. You can have a little more subtlety with paint. Okay, so um, I'm going to turn the page. Well, maybe I'll just look here. Um, Heidi says, kind of like those painted bikes or people on the sidewalk that look normal from a certain angle, and then when you're right on top of them, they're stretched out. Oh, the food there is yin-yang sort of design. Oh, you mean kind of like the yin-yang pattern? Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that kind of that symbol shape. I think that's what you're talking about. Yeah, you could. I can see that for sure. Um, <laughs> my version of the old man makes him look a little bit older. Maybe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I, it's worth saying actually. One of the things that that I I tend to do and I do deliberately is I try to exaggerate things a little bit more. Not only just because I'm teaching and I really want to make what the lessons I'm doing more obvious to people, because that you know, especially over the web like this, getting the subtlety of uh, those differences can be a little bit tricky. So I want to make sure I'm kind of going a little bit overboard so that you can pick up on those differences a little bit easier. Um, and also I just, I, I, maybe it's just my, I have a background in, in comic books and cartooning. So that's kind of one of the approaches is to really kind of overemphasize things. Um, but I also just find it's, it's way easier to dial something back than it is to dial something up afterwards, right? So if you've drawn, as we're going to do like some seniors and then you try to make them and you, they look too young, it's harder to make them look older than it is to take an older person and make them look younger. If that makes sense. You'll, you'll see as we go here. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to close this and let me see. I was going to, uh, I think, I think, well, what do I want to do here? Let's look up um, uh, elderly. Okay. <laughs> Trying to see. Full body. 
<laughs> here's this could work for our purpose here. Let me see. I'm just gonna drag this onto my desktop. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll use uh, we'll use this. Okay. So um, this this is gonna work well for our purpose because we've got these two guys who are kind of hunched over a little bit. Um, which again, if we're if you're trying to draw, this is a, a basic class again, just as a reminder. Um, if we wanted to get much more subtle, that would be a, a different thing. But for our purpose, to, to draw someone who's a little bit older, we are going to kind of make them look like hunched over and a little bit more frail um, to kind of get nail that look. Okay, so let's get our. We've got our sketchbook. We're going to move on to a new drawing here. I'm going to just go back to my page view. Okay, so um, let, well, let's try to draw both of these guys here. And we're going to we're going to start out. Maybe I'll do one using the um, act, line of action style. So with that line of action as, as a refresher, what we're doing is we're looking for a line that we can see. I'm going to draw the person on the left. So I'm going to look for a line that kind of can describe this form. All right, so a line that moves right through, right? And in fact, so this is almost like the back, right? I'm going to arch the head even a little bit forward. And we can even take this, and I'm just going to kind of push the butt out a bit here so that the back is more arched. So this will make sense here in a second. So I'm going to take another pencil. I'm going to sharpen this one. So I'm looking for a line that can just help kind of move right through the body. And then I'm going to go over and add, we we'll call those rhythm lines over top of it. So let's start with this head here. We've got this old man's head, and I'm kind of putting it not straight up, but on an angle. I'm just gonna switch this to, the, to, or to manual focus, there we go. Okay, so we got the head, and then we've got these rhythm lines, kind of pretty much on the back side anyway, follow the back. And then we've got this one leg, and Another thing that I like doing when it comes to uh, older people's bodies is using these kind of lines that, that kind of move inward like this, right? So that the, the, the everything kind of bows in, right? So here's, this is that uh, leg on the left, and then we've got another one, let's say, here on front. And we can also make these kind of nice and kind of thin, because generally people, as I said, kind of thin out a little bit as they get older. All right, and then in here, we're going to kind of thin this out. And then here's this neck. All right, you could even, if you wanted, carry this in and have this whole thing arched quite dramatically if you wanted. Um, and then we've got this arm. All right, we don't see his other hand. Okay, so I'm gonna. So this is the. This is what we want to get done here as quickly as possible. And then um, let's say I'm just gonna use a slightly different color to kind of go over top of uh, maybe I should use this as my second color. So if this is this eye, here's, I'm not gonna go into full detail, but uh, got the hair, I'm gonna just, all right, and then here's this body. 
hand and then the cane. Which again, we can kind of bend a little bit. <laughs> Just for fun. It's it's a bending under under his weight, right? And I'm gonna actually I liked how this arch was quite significant, so uh, oh, this one, this leg. I'll go back over here and, and darken things in. Cane is really getting uh, out of control there. It looks like a, I'm walking a dog now. That's okay. I don't mind. If you've done it, you know, I, I think it's it's important to, to just keep moving forward if you make a so-called mistake in your artwork. And not to just give up and crumple things up. Okay. So, so here's kind of a much more cartoony version of of a figure, right? But you know, if we can learn this kind of cartoony version, then we can slowly make it more and more realistic. All right. So these this kind of bend in there really emphasizes this arch. Like if we wanted, we could make it even more of like a hump on here, and that head coming. The more this head descends down here and this neck starts to come down, the older that that fellow is going to look, right? The more kind of hunched over they're going to be. Additionally, we can start shrinking. Like, so if we had another guy walking right next to here with his back, you know, let's say I'll just kind of quickly sketch this guy in here. And instead, you know, this got... I don't have, well, let's see, how can I fit this in here? Um, let's see if, you know, he was running and this leg is kind of moving out here. See how that back is so much more arched and the head would be up here. All right, so it's like this person has kind of got a big kind of a marching kind of quality. So that would be this, that's our first kind of warm up drawing for uh, of the figure. Um, I was going to draw the other guy right next to it, but so I'll do it on another page. So this is using the line of action style. And then the next one I'm going to use uh, the block in method. So I'm just going to turn that over. <clears throat> and so let's draw the old man on the right with the hat on. Okay. So if we were doing that style, we can even use you know the the grid there from the stock image to help us right so let's let's even just draw that right on here i'm going to draw that grid because i think that might help people a little bit visualize it you know you want to use whatever trick you can to help you right so let's say i'm going to maybe enlarge him a little bit let's say this is his back right so if this is i'm going to block this in all right, so that's going to be where his hat is going to be. And then this pretty much can go straight down. And we're using the block in method. Remember, we're thinking about like how if we we're going to make a big block of marble, how much marble we would need. So I think we need something like this. Okay. So let's chisel this in a bit. Here's the hat. Imagine somewhere around here is where that shirt is going to be. All right, here's one leg. 
Here's another leg. Right in a foot. And then this cane. All right. Okay. So everything, it looks a little bit weird right now. I totally get it. Now let's kind of go for a little bit more accuracy. All right. So let's say this is the top of his torso here. And we've got this hat. All right. And this is the face. And instead of going that way, it's kind of kind of arching in here, but I'm going to use that for the nose. Okay. Now, right now, this looks like a larger man, right? So I'm going to thin him out quite a lot here. Because if I take a line and I was to go from the hat down, straight down, where am I going to hit? It looks almost like if I go straight down, that back of that hat would hit that knee. So this leg needs to kind of go back a bit. And then we've got his shoe. Okay. So in actuality, that's there. I'm looking at this arm. So this arm kind of comes at this angle a little bit down. And then if I try to find the angle of that arm, so this means this should go down here a little more. Okay, so got an ear. We got this back foot. I'm gonna put on, give it a little bit more. These wrinkles here, these baggy pants. <laughs> and then, and got this kind of arch in the back, and then he's got his hand out here. Okay. So now I'm going to just go in here and um, I'm going to start adding a little more detail. We should just sharpen some pencils while people catch up. Oh, I got Heidi saying good night for the day. So thank you, Heidi. Have yourself a wonderful afternoon. Okay. So now I'm going to come in here to this back, which is, you know, in a way, like being an artist is a lot like being an actor, and that you have to, like, when I'm drawing in a classroom with my students, and we have a model and I'll often get the students to stand up and assume the same position that the model is in, in order to really help understand, you know, the the posture of that um, that they're in, and also to have some empathy for that person, you know, who's standing there in front of them and, and what they're going through and, and how difficult it can be. Okay, this guy's got some glasses. Oh, we got this chin. See, I'm getting into the details here far earlier than I want to be, so I'm just going to move forward here. 
Let's get some clothes. As I'm doing this clothes, I can just start adding a little bit of wobbliness to them. Right, to try to get all these wrinkles in. Whether they're in the right place. If, I, if I'm really trying to get this super accurate, then I'd spend time trying to make that accurate. But I'm, I'm not, right? I, I'm, I just want to get the sketch in here. In probably, uh, I'm trying to, I've, I've been playing around with my schedule a little bit, and I can't remember the date, but we will do a whole session on um, fabric and drapery and, and how to make that look believable. So, um, but just for our purpose now, just these, if you can get these kind of wobbly kind of lines in there, it's going to sort of look like a baggier kind of clothes. which older people tend to have, right? Kind of, they're, they're into the comfort, you know, un unlike young people and their yoga pants and everything's got to be tight-fitting. Older people just want to be able to walk around and, and comfort and not have, they're not really so concerned about picking up some hot guy on the bus, right? They're just looking to get the soup and, and have some soup that's not too cold, not too warm. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, and then these shoes... Okay. The other thing I like, you know, if there's a seam in a pants, it's kind of fun to try to draw that seam. Um, how much further do I want to go on this drawing? I think, I think I might keep it here. Just, um, so you could see two totally different approaches to drawing uh, a figure. Right? This one is certainly more cartoony, but we can use this basic thing to, to do a much more realistic so-called drawing like this. You know, one isn't better than the other. It's just what works best for you. When we do this style, we're literally, we're literally building from the inside and then building on top of that basic frame, basic uh, action line. Versus this one, you saw we built from the outside, right? We started with that kind of grid line. We kind of created this box shape or envelope, right? You imagine going to the quarry and chiseling this out to make a big marble sculpture, right? So whichever one works best for you, you would use that one, right? I, I notice a few problems with my drawing that this arm is a little bit long, like... You know, maybe this hand should have actually been here instead of all the way out here, right? I probably am not gonna, I'm not gonna change it now, but if I really wanted some accuracy, then you could start going around and looking for, you know, the inconsistencies and trying to fix those kind of things. Okay, maybe I'll just leave that up for a second before I move on to our final drawing. Um, I guess also, um, what am I going to say about proportions? The, you know, the body, as we get older, tends to kind of shrink and kind of, um, get smaller. So, you know, if you were drawing, let's see, you know, one of these guys here, right, maybe one of those fellows started out this way, but as they get older, they're going to kind of move down maybe to this level. And then of course, you know, we, we drew way back, um, you know, about I don't know, three weeks ago, we drew, this was 
kind of our um, heroic male figure, right? So you can see this, we had this uh, cashew shape, this bean shape in the center for the torso. You know, as it gets older, it gets more straight, and then eventually this bean inverts so that the bean is here instead. Um, does that make sense? Should I, should I draw that? Should I do a side version of that? So here's the female version. It's the same sort of thing. So that arched back, you know, which is a feature of younger people, is changed when we... Um, maybe I'll just... I haven't done this before, so let me think the best way to do this. Maybe I'm going to quickly draw this in here for people who are interested. You won't really see these changes from the front so much, right? So um, if you don't have to, to do this, if you just want to quickly watch as I zip around here. Right, so this was my the, the eight head tall figure. Right, and I said instead of if the I'm going to draw maybe on the side here. This is the the regular eight head tall guy. Here's the torso. Here's the torso would come up to here, arm, and then comes all the way down under here. Here's these legs under here. All right. So on the kind of great big biceps and, and uh, forearm, etc. Right, so from the side instead, uh, as a person is going to shrink down, the top of their head is, would be up here, even if there were kind of a heroic male. So let's, if we, let's say we have a heroic senior. <laughs> um, let's say that this head is going to be here. Right, the torso, which is now going to be halfway down here because we're shrinking everything. Right, so we have the neck and then we have this cashew shape. All right, and then are the knees going to be kind of here and here? So, we've got, all right, and then the arm is going to actually so come down even further. So here would be the elbow here. And I probably would actually, rather than just drawing that head here, it would be more like this, if that makes sense. So just to kind of quickly go over this drawing. A little little paunch happening here. All right. He's sad. He's sad. <laughs> and then this cane. Okay. So just kind of giving you the opposite of this. All right. Same kind of figure, um, let's say the other leg would be there, right? And maybe his other arm is holding his back. <laughs> okay. So, Let's move on to our final, another page here for our final drawing. Um, 
I also, let me see, I had a few other images of things that I was considering um, drawing today. So there's obviously the um, famous uh, American Gothic by Grant Wood. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily say these are older seniors, right? I mean, this guy's maybe probably in his 50s, 60s. And she's certainly not. I don't, this is his younger wife, I guess. Much younger wife. Um, I did like this image. I don't know. It's probably not very high res, but, um, of this guy walking in the field by, um, uh, Loritus Anderson Ring, who I, I don't know, I've never heard of him before, but just while I was doing the search, I came upon his work and I, I did, I liked this, uh, just, you could see his posture and the cane, these shoulders, which are, are down, right? Like, unlike the, the, at, heroic male who's got big high shoulders that kind of slope out this way as we get older the body, the posture pushes us forward right so we could we feel the the body moving forward right even like the 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 jacket kind of popping up that way just sort of tells us that the back is sloped forward so your jacket is going to kind of pop up right um and everything just everything about it just has this kind of a, a worn quality you know like not warm but worn like things have been worn in like even think about the colors these kind of very fall like colors browns and uh like everything's been toned down right the sky is gray you know this this is the the last little bit of sunshine on the horizon <laughs> uh, um, other things that I was thinking about, um, just since, uh, we watch a ton of Peppa Pig in this house with our little, uh, daughter, it, it is interesting, I was even considering doing this as a warm-up drawing, I thought it might be a little bit simple, but, you know, just the subtle kind of, the difference between Mommy Pig and Grandma Pig is, and, and Grandpa Pig, it's just this little kind of wobble underneath the, 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 the chin here, just to kind of, like, insinuate wrinkles, or, you know, it's, it's less round and smooth, uh, you know, as, as we get older, we start getting little, you know, um, the body changes, right? We, we do get wrinkles and things in unexpected places, so I just, I thought, you know, I, I, I actually really think Peppa Pig is, is that's why I don't want to get onto this train of thought, but um, just that subtlety, that little difference in the line helps create, a, you know, a, a, the age difference. So it's a good reminder of how you can do that as an, as an artist. Um, here's another um, well-known image. This one um, by Pablo Picasso. This is one of his earlier pictures. This is the old guitarist. Uh, from his blue period, when apparently he couldn't afford red, or I don't know, I don't know what the, the, the myth goes. Um, and you can also see there's a few different paintings underneath it. Um, so one of his early big famous paintings that he did well, kind of catapulted him into celebrity. I was thinking about doing this, but this doesn't really help us kind of build on much of the stuff that we've learned so far. But what is useful is thinking about these very bony features, right? Like as this, as he's kind of getting thinner and thinner and he's supposed to be this homeless guy begging for change and his clothes are all tattered and, you know, he just has this dejected look, you know, as opposed to the, the period after this so-called rose period where his paintings get much more colorful and they have clowns and harlequins and all this kind of stuff. This is the kind of the more depressing period. Um, um, you know, it's just there, and the skin takes on this kind of pale white quality. So you can use that color when you're making your artwork to emphasize those different kinds of characteristics and qualities. Um, 
Oh, I, this one here is also probably, I don't know if you've seen this picture before, but this is amongst the, also the most famous pictures of an older person of all time. This is uh, Whistler's mother. It's a portrait of the, uh, the uh, James McNeil Whistler, I think it was his name. Um, he did a portrait of his mother. And I think it's just called Whistler's Mother. I don't even know what the actual real title is. But this is also a very famous painting. Um, and again, I, I think it's a great painting, but we don't really see too much of... We're really focused on her face. Most of the rest of her body is hidden underneath this kind of um, dress that is you know this might have been like a painting there was people used to get a lot of paintings done for birthdays and funerals <laughs> or or births right so this she it could very well be that he painted um his mother after some sort of you know family tragedy or something right um but this is probably the most famous painting of an older person that i can think of off the top of my head um so that that would be another painting if you want to explore that. Lastly, um, two other pictures. We'll get to the one that I want to do shortly here. And this one here is, I think it's called uh, At Eternity's Gate. You know, this idea of this um, old man facing eternity, you know, crying into the, his the, his palms um and I, I i think this is a great fame it's a famous painting um it's a beautiful painting but i did think it might be a little bit dark <laughs> the idea of making a picture of this old man who seems like possibly uh, i don't know the story behind it but like in ruins like he's just blown his family's fortune on i don't know some poker game or something i don't know or somebody died or whatever um but it is a you know there was a recent vincent van gogh film starring willem dafoe called at eternity's gate um which is a great movie i'm sure some people think it's way too boring but i thought it was great willem dafoe looks uncannily like van gogh um, but I thought we would kind of finish today with this picture, also by Van Gogh. It's, a, it's called Old Woman with a Shawl and Walking Stick. Um, and I like it because, first of all, we're not getting distracted by the face. Um, and then we can practice a little bit of shading and rendering while we work on this picture. So, we've got a blank page in our sketchbook ready to go. We've got some pencils. I'm just going to do a quick sharpen here. And uh, are we ready to big, big breath? Let's take, we're gonna tackle this picture. Okay. So again, there's a few different ways we can approach this. Um, I think I'm gonna, tr I'm gonna use the, the block in method again. You're certainly welcome to use any approach, but I'm gonna think about like, let's say the first thing I'm doing is looking for that angle on the back of her head. All right, if I look at it, oh, it looks pretty good. I feel like I did a pretty good job getting that. So let's say I'm gonna block that in. And then I'm just gonna come right down here to the bo bottom on the ground. Draw a straight line here. And then we've got the top of her head. It looks pretty good like that, I think. All right, so I'm gonna draw this. And then I'm just going to connect down here where this is supposed to be her hand right around here. Okay, so now let's start chiseling into this block. All right, so I think this line up here is a little bit long, so I'm just gonna shorten it down. All right, and then we've got this part of her shawl and then her arm. And again, I can look at it and think, that's the line I've drawn. Does that match up? It looks like pretty good. Okay, so if this was her hand in here, I'm just gonna continue. I'm not gonna get too worked up about like proportions or anything just yet. 
Okay. And then here's this. Now I can also right now just sort of look. If I draw a straight line up and down, it looks like this comes just a little bit forward of her uh, the, the the shawl around her face. So I think we're in good good territory there. And then I got a little bit of room here for a foot to sticks out. And then we've got some fabric around here. And this kind of comes up. We've got some fabric here and there. Okay, so now now we can do a few things. Let's start seeing if we f how we feel about where everything is. The first thing I do when I'm looking at my drawing is I notice that maybe my person, this older woman that I'm drawing here, is maybe a little bit too wide. All right, like I feel like it's a little bit wide. And I can also notice, let's say... Well, I think this should probably come in maybe a little bit more like that at the very least, right? So let's even, the more information I put down here on the page is going to help. So I think that does help. Okay. Got this fold, another fold. So every, every thing I'm doing here is just adding more information for me. Now, how do I feel about this arm, that length of that arm? Well, that's that shawl wrapping around the other side. I think this wrist should instead be somewhere like this. All right. Because if I take this down here, yeah. Okay, so they kind of see how they match. I'm always trying to find where the, um, I'm, I'm looking, you know, where one line is and how does it match up with somewhere else on the picture? Okay, and then we have this little f other leg sticking out back here, which I actually think l makes, in terms of even his drawing, a little bit awkward. So I might even, when I'm doing my drawing, take that out, because it, for me, just seems a little bit odd. Okay. So, um, that would be where we want to, so I guess there's the the sidewalk or something and you, you even notice so we've got say this sidewalk i'm going to draw the line right through but notice what van gogh did we've got this line here and then his kind of pops out down here so his kind of looks a little bit weird it looks like the, the sidewalk or wall goes here and then in behind her kind of zips up and back here which i think makes it look awkward so i'm actually going to fix <laughs> Uh, this drawing a little bit. Okay, so even maybe right before I push on, I'm just looking at these different folds, right? So we got a fold here, and then another kind of wavy fold, right? And then it kind of comes up, and then I got this kind of these humps. Um, and I guess this area is a little bit bigger than it should be, but uh, maybe I'll just leave it. One thing that's really nice about the way he's drawn this drapery is we can see the body kind of hiding underneath all of this heavy fabric. And we can also use this checker pattern that's on the fabric to help us. Right? So we can help kind of create the contours of the body following it. So here's this fold, and we have this one kind of disappears around. And then we got one more here. And 
and this may be a, if if you find this kind of stuff that I'm doing a little bit difficult by all means you can kind of you can ignore it um, I'm kind of a bit of a geek for this kind of stuff so I I'm gonna keep on going but um, Another one that I'm going to have to improvise a little bit just because of the way that I've drawn it. Okay. Um, and then I guess there, there would be another one here, but it's, again, just because of the way that I've drawn things, you can't see it. Um, down here on the ground... Oh, and I guess this wraps around and comes right up. So, I'm going to... This is odd how... I guess the way I've drawn her foot... I guess... Anyway, I'm just going to... You gotta make some changes sometimes. Okay, well, this needs to be sharpened. So, I'm now gonna go right in here, boldly start putting in some lines. I wanna get all of the subtlety of these, uh, these lines, as, they, as the, the wrinkles, as much as possible. In fact, I kind of was a little bit, sometimes I get a little impatient and I start kind of going a little fast with these, this fabric. Now, um, you know, this is a, a beginner's class, and I, this might look very, this is kind of difficult, for sure. Um, so do the best you can. Uh, we're, I've, I've kind of, I always like trying to challenge people and see what people do. Um, my expectations for this kind of thing aren't, aren't very high, because we're, I'm definitely kind of pushing you. So if you can just get this basic shape down and you're able to get a little bit of the fabric texture in here, that's great. But don't feel like you have to make it look um, as you know detailed as mine is, right? Because you, you could spend quite a while trying to nail this uh, these wrinkles, especially. Okay, now I'm we've just got a little bit of loose thread. I think I'll come back to fix the do that stuff as we go here. And I'm actually going to come up here and kind of fix. Remember, I was that foot I thought was going to look a little weird, so I'm just going to bring this right up into here. Okay. So I've got some cameras that are going to start uh, dying shortly here. So if, it, if the feed cuts out momentarily, I'll I think I'm just going to replace the battery really quickly. 
I think I also, this arm, I just did too wide. Um, so let's see, I can see if I can make it work by... I don't know if anyone has uploaded any photos to um, for me to review or drawings that they've done. If you if you do want some feedback, now would be the time to do it because I think I'll draw for maybe another five minutes. Let's see how much maybe ten minutes if I you know, I'm kind of into it, but. Uh, um, But if you want, uh, again, send it through all the different kinds of social media channels there and, and also post in the comments where you put it so I can find it. Um, okay, so if I've got my drawing kind of to this level, I can start shading it. Um, Van Gogh has used some really beautiful um, cross hatching in this drawing. Probably won't have time to get to all of that, but uh, I'm going to attempt a little bit of it. I'm just going to quickly color in, let's say, where uh, this fabric is. some music I had up earlier let's see if that starts playing again See, all of this is, is also darker too, so I'm going to shade this whole area. And uh, as a reminder too, when I'm shading, I'm also trying to have my lines kind of curve around the form. So that's really helps kind of give it some dimension. Okay, and to get all of this, this is all really dark, so I'm gonna really quickly go over top of it with the side of my pencil. You can see the way that I'm holding the pencil. All right, so I can just, because this is going to be nice and dark, so I might as well just get as dark as possible right now. All right, and then it's particularly dark under here. So let's darken that. Again, I'm squinting my eyes and I'm looking at the picture, trying to figure out where I can put the darkest areas.
Okay, so just as I'm getting closer to finishing here, I'm not going to go finish the whole detail here, but I think just enough for for our purpose. You can see these kind of lines that I'm putting in, just like Van Gogh, just to kind of emphasize the shape of this form. Don't be afraid to go dark. I, this is like the one thing that I'm always trying to get people to do is, is to like not be afraid of, of pushing harder with your pencil to really get those dark, 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 dark blacks. It's so satisfying when we see them. You know, other thing too that Van Gogh did, I'm not going to have time to do it, but you can see he even shaded the walls. He's got a, a shadow here that he's done. You know, I see I've eliminated that other foot. I just thought that looked weird. So. Um, okay. So. You know, even just a little noticing the difference between my drawing and his drawing is even just this hand, like his drawing has this hand up even higher, like, or, or that angle. And that makes a big difference because the way that I had done it is the hand is sort of just resting on that, uh, the, I'm trying to think of. Whereas his, he kind of drew it with the wrist pushing down, which means it's like the body, like the force of the arm pushing into that. I mean, does that make sense? I don't think of how I can, I can't quite, you know, so we can see that the force, the, her weight is pushing down into here. And he did a much, he was much more observant than I was. And he, he's got that wrist that's taking a lot of the load of the body in there. And that's something that I did not do in, in my drawing, right? So, which which doesn't mean that my drawing is a bad drawing. It's just now when I go to make another drawing, I'm going to take that thing that I observed and apply it to my next drawing, right? So it's always like you take you you're learning little bits in each and every time, and then you take all those lessons and then you apply them to the next drawing. Okay, um, again, I could work on this for hours and hours and hours, but I think, uh, I think that is probably good for us for today. Um, so I do want to show just a, you know, I always like at the very end of class to kind of um, share, let's say, this is just things you could do over the course of the next week is looking for images of maybe some older people. Maybe it's um, people that you see in magazines or in videos, you see something on, on screen, you can pause it and make a drawing of it, go on Google Images or any other um, Yahoo search or whatever engine you use for finding images and make some drawings of those. Try, try to focus less on the faces. We're gonna do, um, I'm gonna show you how to draw children's faces and seniors' faces later on. But for our purpose, just the thing of the body or take some photographs of your own, right? And uh, try using those as the basis for your artworks. And try drawing the basic kind of building blocks of a person that's maybe a little bit older 
in your own sketchbook, right? Um, take that out of the way. Bring it back. Okay. So, um, I think that brings us to the end of today's class. I don't think anyone has sent me any images for feedback. Um, so, I, 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 I'm not going to... There's nothing for, for me to do in that arena. Um, but this is ordinarily what, where I would uh, give you guys some, some of my thoughts on the artworks you've created. If you have any additional questions, um, so you can send them to me now and then, or save them for Tuesday, the, which is our next class. Every, every Tuesday and Thursday for the foreseeable future at 4 o'clock Pacific time. That's uh, in Vancouver, Canada, or Los Angeles, San Francisco. Um, I don't know if Alaska's on Pacific. <laughs> but uh, you, get the, you get the idea. I'm in the same place, same time. I don't know, till for... I don't know. Like I'm, I originally planned on just doing two more classes, but I've, I keep extending this because for me this is really interesting, doing a, a f devoting a full episode to something I would normally just kind of quickly talk about, maybe do a quick sketch on the board. So this gives me an opportunity to more develop and articulate some of these thoughts for people who are interested. Um, uh, next class, we're going to be, I'm going to introduce portraiture. And so we're going to talk about how to draw the human face, which, um, you know, we've done a little bit of here and there based on some of the drawings, even, even today, our warm up drawing had a, a portrait, but we're going to really learn the dive deep into that. And I'm going to show you all of the kind of the secret kind of structure that is really important to understand when you're trying to draw a face. Even if you want to abstract and obliterate the face and do something kind of bizarre, knowing how the, that basic fundamental structure that is, you know, in, in everyone's face, it's really amazing. And if you can learn that and then you can apply all the facial features that you see on every, every individual person, and then all of a sudden you see a likeness, and that's really cool. And then the, the class after that, I'm going to show you how to do your self-portrait. And you're going to draw yourself while I draw myself. You could also, you, if you wanted, you could draw me, but I think it would be a wasted opportunity for you to really learn a little bit about how to draw using your own face. And I guarantee you'll surprise me. I d was just talking to a teacher this morning. Um, well, I guess it was a while ago. Last fall, I went to a school here in Vancouver, and I worked with all of the students from kindergarten all the way up through grade eight, some over like 250 students or so, and I, sh I showed every single kid in the school how to draw their self-portrait. And, you know, you could see the, the kindergarten teachers like, this is, they're not going to be able to do anything. They're kindergarten kids. And at the end... Everyone made amazing artwork. They hung them all in the gym, and there was a big party, and it was fantastic. So, if you don't think you can draw a self-portrait, I've shown kindergarten kids how to draw faces, and not just any face, but their own face, and to capture a likeness. So, it is possible. Guarantee you. Guarantee you, you can do it. Um, so... Having said that, uh, you guys enjoy the rest of your afternoon and um, uh, enjoy the weekend. I think it's supposed to be a, a kind of a nice weekend, at least here on the West Coast. So if you can, um, enjoy a little bit of fresh air if you've been cooped up in the house for the past three months. And we'll see you on Tuesday, everybody. So thanks again for tuning in and uh, we shall see you on the flip side. Bye-bye.